Barbara Peters. Welcome to another episode of The Criminal Calendar. We have a special treat today, an almost brand new author. She actually has two books under her belt. First one is called Blindsided and the new one's called Kiss Cut. So, Karen Slaughter, welcome. Thank you. It's really fun to have you here and because we haven't had much of a chance to talk before, this is going to be an exploration for me. Oh no. <laughs> I can ask you a lot of elementary questions such as, tell us about where you're from and how you got started in all this. I'm from uh, Jonesboro, Georgia, which is a small town in the south, and it, it's not a small town anymore, so if anyone's been to Georgia lately, I'm, I'm not lying about it. When I was growing up, there were probably three storefronts in downtown, and uh, one of them was always changing hands, so there was a dress shop, a hamburger place, um, and then the mall came, and uh, we, we sort of became a, a suburb of Atlanta like every other town close to Atlanta. But when I was growing up, it was very much a you know your neighbor sort of place where if I got in trouble uh, down the street, my father knew about it by the time I got home, uh, which of course I didn't get in trouble much, but uh, it, you know, it, everybody just knew everyone else. And so when I started to write, I wrote about that. Um, I think the most important thing an author ever learns is to write what you know. And the second most important thing is to write what you want to know. And uh, what I'm interested in is forensics and medicine and uh, police procedures and that sort of thing. So that's what I write about. The little town that you have created for your um, physician who doubles as the town coroner, yes. Sarah, is, uh, is it Hartdale, George, is that what you call it? Um, well, that's actually one of the cities. Um, Grant County, uh, which I say in the book is named after the good Grant, and that's the one who donated Grant Park to Atlanta. <laughs> not the one who was uh, fighting on the uh, Union side. On the evil north? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I didn't say that. Um, but Grant County has three cities, Hartsdale, Avondale, and Madison. And if anyone's from uh, Georgia, they know these are probably the most beautiful cities in the south, and I have trashed two of them and uh, made Hartsdale, which is probably the least prettiest town, the best town in my books. So it's definitely fiction at work. And. What size city is, is it, or town is it, that you've created for your fictional characters? I've left that open. It's, it's, I consider it a small town, but it is a college town, so you get a lot of people coming in and out, professors, so it's not a little incestuous sort of community like a lot of small towns can be. Um, you have an influx of, um, you know, a lot of northerners, uh, a lot of people from different regions who are bringing their regional problems with them, I guess. And uh, it, it also leaves it open, so I can always have some really bad guy uh, become a professor at the college or bring a kid who is at the college in so you're not always looking at the same characters. How wise of you? You're going to be avoiding the Jessica Fletcher syndrome then. Well, I, you know, I do feel a little bit like Jessica Fletcher because it's such a peaceful, quiet town until I show up and I think everybody, when they see me coming, thinks, oh God, somebody's going to die. <laughs> well, um, yeah, but that's your job, you know, as a mystery writer. But, but the truth is, you know, part of the charm of um, especially non-professional sleuths, although you do have, since Jeffrey, Sarah's ex-husband is the police chief and Sarah herself has a, is a quasi-forensic position as the coroner. So we can't say that you're really writing an amateur sleuth, but if you do pick ambient, small town, regionalism, whatever it all is, uh, the downside is credibility. How are you going to have a constant stream of murder, whatever going on in this, in this uh, relatively circumspect environment. I think Cabot Cove, the reason we all call it Jessica Fletcher is I think it's supposed to have like a population of 400 and now it's probably down to 329 right. or something. It doesn't least. work out too well. Plus, you, t you touched on a really good point, which is in a very small town, there aren't any secrets. It's almost impossible in a community that size for anyone. I mean, nobody really can have a clandestine affair. Nobody can really be embezzling down at the bank or whatever without, you know, it, 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 you don't have that anonymity that you get in the city. Well, you know, I think that in one regard you do because everyone assumes they know everything about you. And, ah. and if you've ever uh, been in a relationship where you find out something extremely contrary to what you've always felt about a person, find out something about their nature, or you know, maybe you go to a restaurant with them and they take all the sweet and lows and throw them in their purse, or you know, uh, don't stand in line for something because the line's too long so they walk off with a pack of gum or I think there are little ticks to people's personalities that no matter how long you know them you you never really learn and that's what I'm interested in with my books I want I want to talk about these little ticks and what motivates people to do what they do and how they justify their their actions 
Except you're not talking little ticks, at least certainly not in Kiska. You're no, no. Serious ticks. But anyway, reverting back to what I was saying, I do think that your idea of the university community, some natural way for this community to have an influx in students and in faculty and in visiting whatever it is, is one way around this difficulty of the small town that needs refreshing. Have you added anything else to it besides? Well, you know, Jeffrey's an outsider, even though he's been there for 10 years. He's a southerner, but he came from Birmingham. And he moved to Grant County, like a lot of people who moved to small towns in the 90s to get away from crime. And what he didn't realize is crime followed him. You know, everybody moved from the cities to the towns, and they brought their kids, and their kids' involvement in gangs and violence and what have you. So, you know, Jeffrey is somewhat of an outsider, so he doesn't really know a lot of people there the way Sarah would. And a lot of times, since Sarah's his ex-wife, they're butting heads, and she's not giving him the information that he might need about certain people because she assumes he knows everything, you know, uh -huh. just like everyone else. Speaking of their relationship, why don't we talk about it a little bit? It certainly is a quirky one. They are divorced, but yet not really. Yeah, I think that that, that, that could be a trap for a lot of cliches, and I try to avoid that because in, in thrillers and books, there are always a, a male and a female who are sort of working against each other, and they end up yelling at each other and in bed. And that doesn't necessarily happen in my books. I, I try to make it realistic. And like some relationships uh, I have unfortunately known where you're not always connecting with a person on every level. Uh, it was also important for me because I, I read mysteries. I love mysteries. I started with Encyclopedia Brown, Nancy Drew, all of those. And you know, I, I really read the genre. And I didn't want a strong woman who was attracted to someone who was a weak man. And I, I purposely drew Jeffrey as a very fleshed out, manly sort of man who has his own opinions about things and doesn't necessarily worship Sarah. Because uh, I, I know, speaking for myself, and dare I say you, I, I don't think we're attracted to men that we can run over. And uh, I've ne I'm never attracted to that sort of uh, worshipful thing in a relationship. So I wanted that to be as realistic as it could be. So Jeffrey and Sarah have uh, realistic problems. You know, they're always butting heads about things, and they have strong opinions about things. And neither one of them is ever going to say, OK, you were right. Well, but they can't really escape each other either in, in their professional capacities, because you've chosen him to be the police chief. And in a way, there again, that, that's one of those essentials in a crime novel is that somebody has to have the policing power. It doesn't necessarily have to be the lead sleuthing character, but the lead sleuthing character has to have access, at least, or some way of cooperating with someone who can right. make an arrest. Right. So Jeffrey's the police chief, and if Sarah is the coroner, then even regardless of their personal situation, they still are going to have professional interaction. Right, and that, that, of course, was on purpose, because I wanted them to have to be together in the same room and, and blindsided. Sarah picks up the phone when Jeffrey has called and says someone had better be dead because she doesn't want calls from him unless it's work related and of course they get past that a little bit and blindsided and more in kiss cut but that was you know I, I, I did that on purpose because they always needed to have to be together in the same room and have to work together but Sarah's never going to be the one solving the crimes she just gives Jeffrey the information I'm not one of these people who believes that the um, forensic investigators go out and you know, if there's a body in the lake, throw on some scuba gear and go down there and, and look at the body. They're, they're always going to be at the lab and to provide science and, and that sort of information so that the, the crime can be worked by the police. So, you know, if you were going to really be pushed, you would call these police novels rather than amateur sleuth novels. Yeah, I, I might. You know, people said that Blindsided was a medical thriller. So I, I don't know. I think each person who reads it probably puts it in a different category, and I like that. I don't... I don't like uh, literary fiction as a title. I think it should all be literature. So I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with all those interpretations of my work.